Yo, what's up guys? Sean Cober here of the Live, Train, Perform podcast. Over the next two weeks, while I launch this podcast, I'm going to be dropping one episode per day. Then I'm going to drop back to one episode per week. The first episode is an introductory episode explaining who I am, uh, my background, my knowledge, my experience. The second episode is all about goal setting. That's going to be followed up by progress tracking, then building habits, doing the things that you enjoy doing, consistency, restricting temptation, meal preparation, accountability, crap foods, getting started and building momentum, along with hierarchy of value, motivation direction, and your environment. Now, if you go back and listen to each one of those topics again, they are all relevant for optimizing your performance and your everyday life. It's not just to do with health and fitness. Yes, I am a strength and conditioning coach, That is my background, that is my specialization. However, I'm a coach first and foremost, and I need to optimize the other 23 hours of the day so that I can get the most out of my clients for that one hour that I'm with them. I will also be answering some of my followers' questions that have posted questions on my Q&A memes, and I'm going to incorporate those answers into the pertinent episodes. What is up guys, welcome to episode 2 of my 2 week launch series. During today's episode, we're going to be going through goal setting and what all of the different elements to good goal setting practices are. Uh, As an overview, we're going to be going through how to turn your thoughts into reality, aligning your goals with your values, how to set smart goals, then working backwards and chunking down those overarching goals into smaller goals that you can then test and adjust on a weekly and monthly basis. Uh, Also matching your expectations with your commitment levels. And then to round out the session, I'm going to be answering some questions that some of my followers posted on my Q&A meme. So keep an eye out for those in the coming weeks. You guys ask the questions and I answer them on a podcast. All right, let's get started. So first up, what we need to do is define a goal. A goal is a target, an objective, an end state, a vision, a dream, something that you want to achieve. Before we go through the details of actually going through the goal setting process, we need to understand that there's multiple elements to our life that make up our health and happiness. Once we understand what these pillars are, then we can start having a look at what our values are for each one of these pillars or categories. An example of these categories that I've written down for myself are health and immune system, then growth and development, followed by relationships, followed by finances and career. So those headings there are all encompassing and cover a number of different things. But once I've got those four pillars there, then I have subcategories for each one of those. Now, a point to note here is that your goals and your values are going to change as your life and circumstances change. A good example of this is the current pandemic that we're going through. A lot of people's uh, values were probably on their career and their finances prior to everything being locked down, losing jobs, being stuck at home, etc. However, now that things have changed, it's important to reassess your values and see what's important to you. So uh, this might mean for some people that maybe they've neglected their family and their relationships, or maybe it's their health. They haven't had time to train. They haven't had time to prepare meals. They haven't had time to, you know, do the things that are serving them on a physical basis. But now all of a sudden they're not working. They don't have that purpose and they need to reassess their values. And maybe you can Maybe you can change direction and start focusing your time, attention, energy, and effort and start implementing some uh, physical practices that are going to help improve and increase your health markers. I'll use myself as an example here. I've been out of work for about four to five weeks now. The gym closed down. We don't know when we're going to open again, much the same as a lot of people around the world. So once I didn't have that purpose of work every day, I had to reassess my values. I literally sat down for 15 minutes with a notepad and pen and wrote down what my values are, the things that were important to me. Those categories that I've written down are health and immune system, growth and development, and relationships and finances. Now, point to note here is that any of these pillars 
They could be anything for anyone. You can literally go as deep as you want. These pillars can consist of whatever's important to you. So Swiss 8 is an app that I'm an ambassador for. It's a veteran-owned, non-for-profit business that promotes uh, mental health through an app that allows you to schedule in eight pillars of health and wellness. So its eight pillars are fitness, nutrition, mindfulness, sleep, minimalism, time management, personal growth, and discipline. So within each one of those categories are subcategories. Now, you can do this for all aspects and all areas of your life, depending on who you are and what's important to you. But you need to spend the time in actually writing things down and figuring out what those important categories are for you. So the principles that I'm going to discuss for the rest of this episode uh, pertain to all of these pillars, all of these pillars of life, all of these aspects of life. When it comes to goal setting, you need to be first clear on what your values are because if your values and your goals do not align, then you're in for heartache and tears, all right? It's never going to end well. Uh, So first of all, you need to be clear on what your values are. Then for each one of these categories, I'll talk about health and fitness because that's what I specialize in. Uh, Then we start setting goals. Now, our goals are our end state. That's our objective. That's our destination. That's where we want to get to. Okay, but our structures, our habits, our daily routines are our roadmap. Those are the things that are going to get us there. So that's, again, why it's super important to make sure that your goals align with your values because it's these incremental changes that you put into place on a day-to-day basis that are going to give you those one percenters that add up over time that lead you down the path of reaching your destination of your goals. Now for me, coaching clients and working with professional athletes, it's the journey that's much more important than the destination. Obviously the destination's an excellent milestone to reach, but it's the journey where you learn the lessons. You find what works and you find what doesn't work And you're constantly testing and adjusting and tweaking and and refining these processes along the way. That's where the lessons are. That's where the beauty is. There's been a lot of research or there's been studies on people who have won a lot of money in lotteries and things like that. And what they find is after, you know, even if they become millionaires, they come from lower socioeconomic classes. Uh, after a year or two, they're pretty much bankrupt because they've literally just been given a fuckload of money and they don't know what to do with it. They haven't had the lessons along the way on learning how to invest and um, budget and you know manage their finances. So uh, the same processes apply when it comes to all of our goals. The lessons are in the journey. So enjoy the journey as you go and pay attention. Once we become clear on what our values are, then we can start setting SMART goals. So SMART goals are specific, measurable, achievable or attainable, realistic and timely goals. A poor example of goal setting is I just want to lose weight. And this is quite common with particularly female clients uh, where they just want to focus on weight loss. Okay, They don't have any tangible numbers that they want to achieve. When I start diving deeper into it, however, uh, I might say something like, all right, what weight do you want to achieve? What weight do you want to get to? I want to get to whatever. Let's throw a number out there, 70 kilos. All right, when was the last time you were at 70 kilos? Uh, When I was in high school, when I was playing sports. All right, well, there's something there that we need to discuss because it's highly unlikely that you're going to be able to get back to that weight because, you know, you're, you're growing, you're developing, your hormones are all over the place. Uh, and your bone density has increased, your muscle mass has increased, et cetera, et cetera, you know, it's pretty unlikely that we're going to get back to that point there. So, you know, having a, an honest conversation with your clients about um, setting SMART goals is absolutely essential for getting them on the right track. I've literally had someone message me via email uh, at Tiger Muay Thai asking if I could help them lose 30 kilos in 30 days. I was like, dude, no fucking way. Like that's literally impossible. Even if you train five hours a day and didn't eat, you probably wouldn't lose 30 kilos in 30 days. So one of my jobs as a coach is all about managing expectations. And this is where helping someone set smart goals is absolutely essential for setting realistic goals that they can actually achieve over a time frame. So let's use this weight loss client as an example for the rest of the goal setting session. Let's say this person comes to me and they want to lose 10 kilos. 
All right, I need to have a look at what their baseline is. If they're 100 kilos, they want to get down to 90, then yeah, we're probably in a good place to be able to do that. However, if they're 50 kilos and they want to get down to 40 kilos, we're probably not in a good starting place to be able to do that. I also have to, have to look at how they come into this. You know, uh, I go back to the energy balance episode, and if someone's been dieting for a long period of time and they've caused metabolic damage, then losing weight is probably going to be very difficult without first getting the body healthy and going through a reverse diet. So um, how you come into it and the circumstances completely depend on how long it's going to take and the steps that you need to put into place on a day-to-day -day basis to, one, set the prerequisites, put your body in a good position, then start uh, taking the necessary steps to push you in the right direction. For this example, let's say this client is currently 80 kilos and they want to get down to 70 kilos. All right, I need to ask, when was the last time you were at 70 kilos? And if they say uh, it was two years ago, all right, how long did it take for you to put on that 10 kilos? And if they say two years, then you know I'm not looking at losing that 10 kilos in three months. I need to dive into the reasons why we started gaining weight over that period of time. Once I've done that and, and I've got a good baseline of where they're at and the circumstances that have got them to this point, then I can start looking at uh, setting SMART goals. So if they're 80 kilos, they want to get down to 70 kilos, then we help set SMART goals. We're looking at specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. So I want to lose 10 kilos by my birthday this time next year okay that is specific it's measurable it's achievable it's realistic and it's timely that's important because now we've got a goal and we've got a destination that is set for one year in the future what I need to do then is chunk that big overarching goal down into smaller goals so to achieve a 10 kilo weight loss over one year now I break that down into maybe quarters and I go every three months, we need to be on track to lose two and a half kilos. All right, now uh, I'm being pretty conservative here because this is again, dependent on how the person comes into it and the steps that we need to take to first get them in a healthy place to then uh, make adaptations. A healthy organism is an adaptable organism. This gives us a little bit of leeway to move in whatever direction we need to depending on who the person is and where they're at at the moment. Uh, so then we're going to chunk down those three-month goals into monthly goals and then weekly goals. And again, this is where the processes and the habits and the rituals and the routines and the schedule starts coming into play because at the end of the day, we need to go, right, if this person needs to lose 10 kilos in one year, then we need to have lost two and a half kilos every three months. All right, how are we going to lose two and a half kilos every three months? Right, we need to be at roughly 800 grams to a kilo every month. How are we going to lose 800 grams to a kilo every month? One, we need to be in a calorie deficit. So we need to have a look at energy balance, which is an upcoming episode, which will launch after the two-week launch series. Once I've got those numbers, now we start implementing habits into their day-to-day -day and week-to-week. -week. So for them to lose 800 grams to a kilo each week, then we start looking at, hey, are you tracking your food? We need to manipulate energy balance. We need to have a look at how much food you're intaking and how much activity you're outputting. Then we need to look at other lifestyle factors like sleep. Are you getting enough sleep? Are you drinking enough water? Are you getting the right macronutrient ratios? Are you getting the right micronutrient ratios? Are you getting enough sunlight to support hormone regulation that are going to allow you to move in the right direction and support these processes behind the scenes to give you the results that you want? This is where we need to really discuss what our day-to-day -day habits are because at the end of the day, it's these small incremental changes and habits that we put into place on a day-to-day -day basis that add up over time that push you towards achieving your goals. Now, one thing that I want to say here is that any good coach first goes to uh, psychological and behavioral change. That's what we need to focus on, okay? So if you're not putting these um, processes in place on a day-to-day -day basis, then you're not going to be able to achieve your goals. During the next episode, we're going to be discussing progress tracking, but I'm going to touch on that briefly here. This is where our progress tracking comes into play. It's important to track our progress on a weekly basis, bi-weekly basis, 
monthly basis, whatever's going to suit your circumstances and your environment. So progress tracking is all about having a look at the results that your time and investment are returning. That is, is what I'm doing right now working or not? If it is working, that's awesome. Power to you. Tweak, refine, test and adjust. If it is not working, then we need to change directions. We'll also need to maybe reassess what our values are because obviously values are going to change, which are going to impact your day-to-day uh, life, habits, routines. If those goals are no longer sustainable, then we need to uh, move the goalposts and we need to put them in a new place that's going to allow us to achieve our goals or at least make adjustments to our training program, our our nutrition, our lifestyle, and we might even need to look at stress management and other things like this. So, you know, when you initially set your goals, maybe you're in a good headspace, maybe work was good, maybe you were in a healthy, happy relationship, but things have changed. Maybe you're a little bit stressed out at work. Uh, maybe you've had a run of weddings or funerals or something like that where it's thrown a little bit of a spanner in the works. Maybe you've got a holiday coming up. Uh, maybe your, you know, your relationship has changed and you're going through. Um, a stressful time there. So uh, it's important to constantly reassess your values and then realign those goalposts, which leads me to my next point of matching your expectations with your commitment levels. Now, uh, I quite regularly sit down with clients and have an initial consultation. And let's say they want to lose 10 kilos of body fat. Now, I will ask them how they come into this, you know, what their lifestyle is like, what their nutrition was like, any diets they've followed, any training programs they've been following up to this point, etc. Um, so I'm assessing how they come into this. Then I will ask them, how committed are you to achieving this goal of losing 10 kilos by this time next year? And more often than not, they are saying on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm a 10. All right, cool. Are you willing to get eight hours sleep a night? Oh, I don't really think that's possible with work at the moment. You know, I've got to get up early and get the kids ready for school, etc. All right, well, now you're a nine. Are you willing to uh, drink three liters of water? Because right now you're only drinking half a liter of water and five coffees. Uh, I don't really like the taste of water, blah, 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 whatever the excuses are. All right, now you're an eight. Are you willing to eat five serves of vegetables a day? Because right now you're only eating one or two servings of vegetables. I don't really like the taste of vegetables, so on and so forth. This is where I will uh, ask these questions and every time they say no, they're not willing to do something, I'll knock a point off. And majority of the time, people come in with these expectations of achieving greatness, but their commitment level is way down. So uh, again, my job as a coach is to manage these expectations to ensure that people can actually uh, set a realistic goal that's going to be achievable. Now, here's the other thing. Motivation doesn't last. So when people typically come to me, they're, you know, they're motivated, they're feeling good, they want to fucking change everything. But at the end of the day, motivation doesn't last. Structure does. And this is why it's so important to implement these daily habits to keep you moving in the right direction. So then we can start asking, hey, have you been, you know, getting eight hours of sleep? Have you been drinking three liters of water? Have you been getting 30 minutes of sunshine every day? Have you been having uh, five servings of vegetables? Are you tracking your food, et cetera, et cetera? And if they're not doing those things, then again, we need to realign those goalposts because what they're doing right now is not serving them and it's not pushing them in the right direction. So motivation doesn't last, structure does. Now, don't get me wrong, motivation's fucking awesome when it's around, but it's unreliable. It's like an emotion. That's like saying, I just want to be happy all the time. If you're constantly relying on motivation, you're going to be in for a rough ride because it's going to be up and down. It's going to be coming and going just like your emotions are up and down. So don't rely on motivation. Of course, when it's there, get after it, smash it, but start implementing uh, daily routines and structures that are going to uh, or that you can rely upon when your motivation is fleeting because that's what discipline is a lot of people say that i'm really disciplined and that's because i've built habits around certain things and discipline is literally doing the things that you know you should do even though you don't feel like it now if you're doing the right thing the majority of the time even if you slip up a little bit here and there or you know you go off or you fall off the wagon so to speak then 
it's so much easier to get back on track. Now, it's really all about doing the right thing the majority of the time. Long-term consistency always beats short-term intensity. Before we round out the session, I've got a couple of questions from some of my followers that posted questions on my Q&A meme. First question comes from Jamie Morris Road 1. His question is, with issues of shoulder mobility, is it better to work on the mobility issue through strength training, work around the mobility issues, or a combination of both? Uh, great question, mate. And that really comes down to what your values are. Uh, and that's why I'm bringing that up during today's session. So if you're a power lifter, for example, and you're prepping for a competition and you can't possibly take any time off because you're focusing on your main lifts because you want to break your or hit a PR during competition, then now is probably not a good time to work on shoulder mobility. However, if you're looking at uh, long-term health and your shoulders, your elbows are playing up uh, every time you bench press, any time you do rowing movements, any type of upper body movement causes issues with the shoulder or the elbows, then that's probably going to be something that you're going to need to prioritize. The answer is really, it depends. It depends on how severe it is. It depends on how much grief it's causing you. Uh, if it's just a bit of a pain in the ass and it's not really uh, super painful, it's just a little bit more uncomfortable, then you can probably address it by doing some mobility-based work at the start of your session. Um, any type of strength session, particularly upper body focus, you want to do some mobility work. So for me, mobility includes some soft tissue work, uh, then some activation work. So an example of this is quite often uh, shoulder pain is caused by uh, poor control of the scapula. So there's something called scapulohumeral rhythm, which is essentially our humerus and our scapula should be moving together. And that uh, allows, or that sets the shoulder girdle in a good position to then allow our glenohumeral joint, which is the ball and socket of the, of the shoulder, to move efficiently and correctly. Now, something that's quite prevalent in Western society these days is something called upper cross syndrome. And this is basically where, uh, because everything we do is in front of us, the muscles of the front of the shoulder and the chest start pulling the shoulder or the shoulder girdle forward and internally rotating the shoulder so the thumb starts turning in. Now, that is basically a muscular imbalance. If the muscles of the front of the shoulder are overactive um, and the muscles on the back of the shoulder are underactive, then those overactive muscles are going to pull the shoulder forward and it's going to shift the uh, alignment of the joint, which is then going to put a lot of strain through the ligaments and the tendons. All right, so I've got some drills on my YouTube channel. If you go onto my YouTube channel, Performance Functional Training, and you look up simple drills to address upper cross syndrome, you'll have some excellent drills there to address that. If, however, uh, it's causing you a lot of pain and grief, then it's probably going to be worth taking a little bit of time off and going through those mobility drills rather than doing them at the start of a, just a heavy um, upper body session you might take some time off some heavy upper body lifting and focus more on the mobility and activation work. So you essentially want to switch off the overactive muscles by doing some foam rolling, some soft tissue work, dampen that signal from the brain to the muscles, tell it to kind of chill out a little bit. And then you need to go and do some activation work for the muscles of the back that's going to pull your shoulder blade down and back, retraction and depression. What that's going to do is set the shoulder, uh, shoulder blade in the correct position to then uh, pull the glenohumeral joint into the correct alignment, uh, which will then allow all of the surrounding muscles of the shoulder girdle to do their job and create stability. It might be worth backing off the heavy upper body strength work for a couple of weeks and focusing more on the mobility and activation work. Get everything firing correctly, put the joint back in the right position, work on motor unit recruitment patterns, and then go back into your heavy lifting. When you do go back into your heavy lifting, just pay attention to your movements though. Anytime you're bench pressing, a lot of people, they will uh, pull their shoulder blades apart as they hit the top of the bench press. Now, that puts your shoulder blades in a shitty, unstable position, puts a lot of load through that glenohumeral joint. So it might be worth uh, addressing your technique once you've addressed your mobility issues. Let me know how you go with that, mate. My next question comes from Mukta Hardasani. I'm going to paraphrase her question because it is a long question. How do you stay constantly motivated and focused on your goals without being distracted? 
For me, that comes back down to aligning your goals with your values. First up, you need to be 100% clear on what your values are. Your values are your driving force behind your actions and your habits. Okay, then you set your SMART goals, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. Then you need to uh, set periods of time where you're testing and adjusting. And if you're not achieving those goals that you're setting for yourself because you're procrastinating or you know other things become more of a priority and those things are getting put aside, then again, you need to go back, reassess your values, and then reset those goalposts. Maybe move those goalposts a little bit further away or bring them a little bit closer, dependent on what your values are at the time. And if you find that you keep procrastinating and you keep putting things off, then maybe those goals just aren't as important as you thought they were. And that brings us to the end of today's episode all about goal setting. During the next episode, we're going to be talking about progress tracking, the many, many different types of progress tracking, why it's important, how we can implement progress tracking, how often we should be doing that, and what type of progress tracking tools we should be using dependent upon our goals. If you enjoy the content that I'm bringing to you guys, please help me spread the message and like, save, share, and subscribe, and pass this off to your friends, your family, anyone that's relevant in your life that it could potentially help, and please make sure you leave a five-star rating and review. Much love, guys. Peace.